All right, guys. So I promised you um, a basing tutorial. So here's my base for my captain. Um, there's like a little vent here. There's like a step up place. I kind of sort of uh, borrowed inspiration from uh, Necromunda style bases or at least Necromunda style flooring. So what we're going to do is we're going to base this guy. So let me zoom out a little bit so we can see the table a little bit better. Uh, this guy is glued to his base so I'm going to take my knife. Don't do what I'm doing. Do it the, the smarter way. Um, maybe just don't glue your guy to your base if you're planning on basing him after the fact. Uh, but what I do is I just kind of gently wiggle back and forth and I tilt the blade down um, so that I don't cut into the model itself but rather cut into the base and just real slowly I don't put too much pressure we're gonna get under that foot and he pops right off uh, now we just gotta do the other foot same way again don't don't do what I'm doing this is dangerous <laughs> But for some reason, I glued these guys to their bases rather than, uh, you know, putting a drop of super glue on one of the feet. Uh, I plastic glued them down. Which, if nothing else, is a testament to my plastic glue. So, I'm going to go ahead and finish getting this guy off, um, and then we'll come back. Alright, so once your dude's off his base, I'm going to take my knife. I'm just going to go ahead and scrape this a little bit just to kind of flatten it down a little bit. Get rid of some of uh, the extra height that might have been added uh, if you actually cut into the model a little bit. Just kind of get it smooth. There we go. Something like that. That's good enough. Alright, so if you're going to follow this tutorial, you're going to need a handful of things. Not a lot of stuff. Nothing too crazy. Um, the, the first big thing is you're going to need to shoot a plastic card. Um, claw plate, plastic, uh, whatever you want to call this stuff. I'm literally just going to cut out way more than I need. Boom. That's it. Um, if you do not have this readily available to you, um, gift cards, old credit cards, um, stuff like that, you can sand off the numbers and cut this down. It's a little thicker than what I'm using here. It's probably about two to three times thicker. Uh, the thickness doesn't matter a ton. This is just easier to glue down and cover up what I'm doing here. Uh, the next thing you're going to need, um, I'm going to use some thick plastic strip. I might dip into some thin plastic strip. And then I know this looks the exact same, but this is actually like a thin dowel. Uh, it's like not even, it's like a millimeter maybe. Uh, and the last thing I'm going to use is going to be tin foil. Uh, now, really, if you don't want to use the tin foil, you don't have to. If you don't want to use the strip, you don't have to. If you don't want to use this, you don't have to. GW makes these bases. You can use Necromunda bases. You can use whatever you want. Uh, green stuff if you like to sculpt. But this is how I'm doing it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my base. I'm going to lay it on this sheet of plastic. I'm going to cut it out. There you go. That's all you need. This much. Um, now... There's a lot of ways you can tackle covering the base. You can do like half the base and then put another piece. You can leave the, the end off. You can do it you know, here and then put another piece on the other side so it looks like there's two panels meeting. Completely up to you. I'm just going to glue this here in the middle. For that, I'm just going to use some super glue. So let that uh, kind of get in there. This is, I need to buy more super glue. So just like that, just a little dot in the middle. And then we're gonna swirl that around and then just press it down. Now while this is um, drying, it won't take very long because we didn't put a whole lot and we've pressed it down so all the surface area is covered. You just gotta give it a couple minutes to dry. Um, so that's before we cut anything off of here. So this is just gonna sit like that for a little while. Uh, we're going to prep our tin foil. Now I'm going to use one of these little metal sheet things. If you don't have, uh, I come from, uh, if you don't know already, another hobby background. 
Um, if you've been a fan of this channel for a while, you already know. Um, but this is a photo etch sheet that is made to look like uh, mesh. You basically uh, in Gundam kits or you know something like this. Uh, if I wanted to cut like a section of this out and then put mesh behind it, I would just cut this out and use it for that. You can use screen. You can use uh, you know anything with a texture on it. I'm just going to lay this down. I'm going to cut out roughly the same amount of this. Oops. And that's okay if it gets all jacked up like that. I'm just going to straighten it out. I'm going to lay this onto here. And I'm going to use the back of my knife and just kind of push this down into this texture. Now what this is doing is creating the impression left behind by this recessed detail in this photo edge part. Um, the, the, the simplest way to say what I'm doing is I'm making tiny scale diamond plate. Now, if the back of your knife isn't cutting it, uh, grab a Q-tip. I had one right here, but I'll just grab another one. That's fine. Um, it works exactly the same way. You just press down, roll the Q-tip, and actually, I think in some cases, the, the Q-tip's a little better because it's softer. It kind of melds to that detail a little bit better, and it lets you get that texture you want. Now, you can use this whole thing if you want, or you can just cut a piece out. So I'm just going to cut a little square out and that will go on our base. And then you still have this to use for whatever else. Now you could also very easily chop that up and use that as well. So now we've got this little diamond plate section. I'm just going to bend this just a teeny bit for all that corner sum. That's perfect. Um, so let's get our hobby cutters. I know I got a pair. There we go. Grab these guys. We're just going to cut around this. It doesn't need to be perfect because we're going to just cut it all the way eventually anyway. Um, and then we're going to even sand this so that it's completely flush. So if there's a little overhang, don't worry about it too, too much. Alright, there we go. So you've got kind of a rough shape. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this strip, I'm going to cut two strips of it out because this is going to be like a center point for me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue one of these down Now, if you don't like super glue and you want to use plastic glue, that's fine. This lets me back up if I want to a little easier. So I'm going to glue that just off center. Just like that. Right? Now we're going to take this little diamond plate thing. And I'm going to glue that right here off to the side a little bit. And then we're going to glue our other strip, kind of overlapping that a little bit. So what I'm trying to create the impression of here is that maybe 
this is two of those like Necromunda style panels. It's got that border around it. And then this section of the floor has been damaged, so they just went ahead and patched it up with that diamond plate. Now this is pretty plain as it is, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take another section of this. Um, now if you don't have access to any kind of specialty tools, uh, I have this tool that is called uh, the chopper. What this does is it lets me chop uh, sections of styrene sheet uh, to length or to certain angles, things like that. So all I need to do is raise this guy up here, butt it up against my template. This is a 45 degree angle. And I have a 45 degree angle. And I can flip the other side. I'm going to chop it a little bit longer than I want it. Um, and then I can do it one more time. And now I've got like a little piece that juts out. And we're just going to glue that onto the base just to add a little bit of interest. So that's going to go like right in here. Just like that. Or I could even chop it in half and put one on either half. Actually, I think that's a good idea. I'm going to do that. because that is going to help me get rid of this dead space here. It's going to minimize how much of that's there. So, just another drop of super glue. And these don't need to line up perfectly. Um, I think just as long as they're close, it'll be fine. Also, try not to glue yourself. Another downside to using super glue over plastic glue. Uh, but the upside is it's much harder to leave a texture behind when you're using super glue. So, there we go. So. Still a little boring, not, not really what I would call done, but we're getting there. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to trim away this diamond plate using my hobby cutters. And that'll work for now. So the last thing I really want to do is I want to add some extra detail to this piece. Um, not as hard as it might seem. Um, I'm going to use this plastic rod, and what I'm going to do, let me clear up my workspace just a little bit for you guys. Um, what I want to do is I want to make rivets. So I'm going to cut these just into real small sections that aren't that big at all. Um, let's do like four of them. Or we'll do, we'll do five, I guess. I don't know. Um, I'm going to take my knife and I'm going to pick where I want to put rivets on this piece. So I think just little holes in the middle of each of these strips. And then to me, this indicates one end of the strip. So we're going to grab like here. I'm going to do, let's do this one. So now we've got our holes. So I'm going to take a drill. I don't have uh, the exact measurement of this drill bit. Uh, the idea here is your drill bit should be a little bit larger than your um, styrene. That's, that's really it. Um, we're going to drill these holes in here. And I'm not going all the way through. I'm going most of the way, but not all the way.
All right, now that we've got these holes in here, we're gonna grab our super glue again. And we're going to, I like to put something down to kind of catch my super glue. So we'll put some metal down and we just need a dot. We're gonna take each one of these dowels, we're gonna dip that in the super glue and we're gonna stick it in one of these holes. Now that I'm sitting here looking at this, I think these holes actually could be a little bit bigger. So while we're sitting here, I'm gonna grab my drill bit. We're just going to widen these just a little bit so we can pull that one out later. I'll fix it in a little bit. You just want to make that hole a little bit wider. Never a bad idea to, drive, to drill pilot holes. Makes, uh, if you need to widen them, it makes it a little easier on you. Um, so now when you glue these in, there will be a little bit of space around them, which is what we want because that's where you're going to put your washes. So I'm going to go ahead and fill this in, and then once all the glue's dry, I'll come back. All right, so once that glue has dried, we're going to go ahead and take our clippers, and we're just going to cut that down. Not a whole bunch. You want it to stick out a little bit, because we're going to come back and refine this later. We're still kind of in that, like, messing around with stuff phase. Um, but I am going to come in here. I'm going to trim around this. And just kind of get that a little bit more to shape so there's our um, you know base so far now you can do extra stuff if you wanted to use this thinner strip and create extra details or hazard stripes or you know whatever knock yourself out I think this is where I'm pretty much gonna leave this one as far as build goes uh, so what I'm gonna do next is I'm going to just make sure I work my way around it get everything cut as close to shape as I can and then I'm gonna come in here and sand the edge down with like a uh, like a 200 grit or a 300 grit just to get everything nice and smooth and everything level before I prime it all right so the last order of business is going to be a little bit of paint uh, painting this is pretty straightforward I think anyway um, so, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a kind of janky brush. This is one of my favorite brushes, but kind of janky. Make sure it's clean. <laughs> and we're going to grab, uh, I think this is Corvus Black. And I'm just going to kind of stipple it along this open panel here. I'm, I'm gonna cover most of it. And then you don't gotta wait for it to dry or anything. We're gonna go ahead and grab that Thunderhawk Blue. We're kinda using uh, some color unity stuff here. We're gonna use the same colors that are on the model, just in a different way. And we're gonna stipple, not the whole thing, but you know, just a big section to lighten that up a little bit. And I think that could actually even be lighter grab from a different hole here. There we go. We just want to create a modeled surface. So a couple different tones, uh, different, you know, layers and stuff like that. Um, now while that stuff's drying, we're going to use that same brush. We're going to do some iron hand steel straight out of the pot. And I'm going to kind of stipple it over the diamond plate section. 
I'm going to cover most of it, not just not the whole thing, just most of it. And then we're going to go ahead and just base paint these roughly. Don't don't go too crazy. Just get in there. Do it like that. Easy. All right. So now that that's all down, um, we need to let this dry for a few minutes. Uh, just just enough that it's not like wet, and we're gonna pull it up because we're gonna do washes and stuff next, and we don't want our washes to mix with this paint and do anything crazy. So I'll be right back once this is dry. All right. So we're gonna do two washes. Uh, the first one we're gonna use Agrax Earthshade, and you might have guessed it. We're going to stipple it across the entire surface. Uh, now this is going to be not a heavy stipple, but you do want to leave like some kind of puddles of it. Because once we're done actually putting the wash on like this, we're going to clean the brush. We're going to dry the brush off. Close your wash so you don't spill it. And we're going to start kind of poking at it and moving it around. We're going to leave some of the pools where they are because we do want like some heavier areas. Uh, but we're just going to kind of like pick it up, clean it up, dry your brush off a little bit, grab some more. Because what you're going to do is it's going to leave a little bit of that coffee stain effect. And that looks great on the ground uh, because it looks disgusting. Um, so there we go. So there's our Agrax wash. Now we're going to do the same thing with Seraphim Sepia. Now we don't have to wait for the previous wash to dry completely. Not a big deal. Um, if anything, it'll kind of help the effect a little bit. Um, just kind of grab some of these areas that you haven't previously grabbed before. Throw it in the middle of some stuff. Uh, I'm going to go a little heavier on the diamond plate because it's going to kind of look like rust. And that's something I want to go for. And then we're just going to let that sit for a minute. And I mean, if you want, you can start pulling it from like around here if you don't like the way that looks. Grab a little bit out of there. And you can even go as far as to like take a Q-tip and kind of just poke at it, what that'll do. Uh, very gently, don't, don't like push your Q-tip into it, but just tap it a little bit um, and then roll your Q-tip a little bit while you're doing it. And that will, it sort of like soaks up that little bit of excess and leaves like a little film behind. That way you can go ahead and, uh, you know, get on to the next step a little bit quicker. So we're going to let this dry. We're going to take our Iron Hand Steel. We're going to take a makeup brush. The smallest amount. We're just going to dry brush that over all the metal stuff. If you get a little in the, the other area, that's fine. Just work slowly, work carefully. Bring back some of that metallic uh, look. All right, so now. We need to um, add some more dirt and grime elements to this. So I'm going to start with uh, Fang Brown. Uh, this is kind of like a nice browny kind of rust color. So I'm going to put this on my palette. And I'm just going to thin it down a ton. Um, you can use whatever you like. I'm going to put some flow improver in it. Because it's going to act kind of like a medium almost. And you want a little more control with this step. So I'm going to grab uh, a finer brush. And I'm going to literally drop this like in random corners. So like right here, I'm just going to put some of that. 
I'm going to put like, now while it's still thin, you want to stipple this on like that, and then just kind of like poke it a little bit. Um, grab these rivet sections. And then you can even put some against the, uh, the other flooring. Uh, now, when I put it against like a section like that, I try to do like a larger section of it. And the reason for that is we're going to layer the next color on top. We can throw a little bit in this uh, panel line here. And again, you can, you can stipple it around. It kind of looks like uh, dirt or dust or whatever once it's dried. So we're going to give that a few minutes to dry, and we'll come back. All right, then we're going to grab a bright orange. I'm using Troll Slayer Orange. We're going to thin it down the exact same way, and we're just going to kind of hit those same areas we did before. So grab around the rivets. Um, now, you don't have to grab around all of them. Um, and then, like, this big section we did over here, we're just going to grab, like, this tight corner here because this is where the rust would get trapped. Um, you can do little stippling, stuff like that. Uh, and then we're going to do a lot of stippling. Not a lot, but we're going to do more stippling over on the diamond plate side because I want to um, make it look like this is starting to rust out a little bit. And then we'll come back once that's dried. All right, and there we have it. So that's our base. Now the last thing left to do is to attach the mini. So here's our guy. We've gone ahead and put some brass rod. You could just glue him to the base if you wanted to, but I'm gonna go that extra mile. We're gonna go ahead and dip these brass rods in some red paint. I'm gonna figure out kind of approximately how I want him to stand, and we're just gonna touch that to the base. So now we've got two little red dots. We're going to take our drill and drill those out. I'll be back. And then once those holes are drilled, it's just a matter of plugging this guy into those, pushing him down, and then putting some glue on the bottom. And there we have it. Um, a Into the Dark style base that I'm quite proud of. So, thank you guys for watching. If you'd like to see more basing tutorials or other stuff, uh, check out the other videos on my channel or let me know what you'd like to see in the comment section below and I'll do my best to try and get to it. See ya.